Do you own the Tracker 4 and want to know how to make it even better than it already is? Well, in this video, I'm going to tell you exactly how to do that. Less than $100, it really is hard to beat the Bounty Hunter Tracker 4. It's a great metal detector, but there are some things we can do to make it even better. And the first thing is understanding how to set this metal detector up. There are some very specific things for every environment that you go to to set this metal detector up so it'll work as good as it possibly can. Now these are very specific and they do change from time to time and place to place. Thankfully, it's a simple process once you understand how to do it. Now, a video explaining how to set this up would be a, a video in and of itself. And thankfully, I've already done a video on how to set this metal detector up for every place you go to to ensure it works the very best. I'll put a link to that up here. Uh, make sure to check that out. The next thing is to make sure that you have everything you need to metal detect every environment. Just like every other sport or activity, having the right tool for the job at hand makes one heck of a difference. The accessory tools I'm talking about are coils. There are three coils specifically that I'm talking about. Uh, the 12 coil DDBH and the 4 coil. Uh, the third coil is the coil that's already on the metal detector itself and that is an 8 inch concentric coil. That coil is perfect for parks and regular hunting. Uh, but these two coils here are very specific in nature. Let's talk about the four coil first. The four coil is a great coil for mid conductors like small gold targets, gold nuggets, um, little earring backs or small gold earrings. Um, this coil will be much more sensitive on those tiny gold targets. The other thing that this coil is really good at is getting into tight areas. You know, maybe you've got some uh, shrubs or some rocks and that sort of thing, and you're really in, in that big coil, that big eight inch coil, or even this 12 inch coil can't get in there. This coil can, and it can get closer to uh, obstacles that are above the ground. But let's talk about obstacles below the ground. A lot of places that we go to, especially parks where there's a lot of human activity, there are a ton of targets in a small area. So if you have a big 12 inch coil like this or even that 8 inch stock coil, it covers a larger space than this little 4 inch coil does. So this 4 inch coil is really good at getting in congested, uh, infested ground that has a lot of different little targets in there. Imagine it. You've got an 8 inch coil that's uh, you know maybe this big right and so it is really hitting a lot of targets hitting targets in that eight inch area you shrink that down to four inches like this coil here uh, you can sneak in through and between buried objects and really isolate those targets and pick the good ones out of the bad stuff now let's talk about the 12 inch coil what do I use this coil for it's massive isn't it look how slender that is though but this coil is my coil of choice when I'm relic hunting. And the big reasons why is one, with 12 inches, it's deeper than the eight inch concentric coil. Uh, and the reason why it's deeper is, you know, these are really antennas is what they are. So just like your TV, you know, you have a small antenna, you're gonna reach a little bit further. You get a really big antenna up there, you're really gonna be able to reach out and hit, hit channels real far away. Uh, if you understand that, you're old like me. So the reasons I use this is for, it provides a little bit more depth. And the other reason is it provides a lot of ground coverage. Now, like with that four inch coil, it doesn't have a lot of ground coverage, which is, is beneficial to us because we can sneak in between stuff and, and really isolate buried targets out in a congested area. Well, if we're relic hunting, typically that's done in a big field, a farm field somewhere, pasture land or crop land. Um, we have acres and acres and acres of area we want to cover. We can cover ground a lot quicker with this 12 inch coil versus this little four inch coil. So those are the reasons I would go with the 12 inch coil. 
The third tip I have is to use quality batteries. Yes, the Tracker 4 is not expensive. It's only $100, but it is still a very sensitive unit that requires the best batteries you can get for it. So for that matter, use quality alkaline or rechargeable batteries in this unit. Don't use that dollar store stuff. You know, if you see like heavy duty batteries, um, you don't want to use those types of batteries. They are not going to damage your metal detector, but they will damage the performance of your metal detector. So always pick quality batteries. Again, alkaline are good. Uh, nickel metal hydride rechargeable batteries, as long as they're from a quality source, are good. And even the lithium rechargeable 9 volt batteries are good, as long as they're from a quality source. The last tip I have is understand the advanced features of this unit. There are ways that you can discriminate very quickly while hunting in all metal mode for depth. Another thing that you can do is really decipher the size of a target to decide if it's what you're looking for or not. Again, teaching somebody how to do these things is a video in and of itself. But thankfully, I've done a video on how to do these advanced tips and tricks with your Tracker 4. I'll put a link to them up there. If you have any questions or even suggestions on how to make the Tracker 4 even better, please put those in the comments below. I answer every single comment on my metal detecting videos.